Here's your scenario. Let me know when you've had a chance to read. Started. Okay, I'm ready. Describe to me what a pheochromocytoma is. Pheochromocytomas are catecholamine releasing tumors of chromaffin cells, and they can be found anywhere that chromaffin tissue is also found. This is typically found in the adrenal medulla, about 80 to 90 percent of cases, but it can also be found outside the adrenal medulla, like in the sympathetic paraganglion, up to 10 to 20 percent of the time. When you have these catecholamine releasing tumors, this accounts for about one in 1,000 patients who show up with arterial hypertension. If you have a patient who's undergoing surgery with this type of tumor, then you want to be sure to manage the hemodynamics very closely because there's an uh, impact from the catecholamines being released that could have big swings in hemodynamics throughout the case. What substances does the adrenal medulla secrete? The adrenal medulla secretes three different catecholamines that are found in chromaffin cells. And this is going to be epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. What are some clinical features that are associated with a pheochromocytoma? The classic triad for this disease is going to be severe headache, uh, diaphoresis, as well as palpitations. But you can also get other severe symptoms like acute renal failure, new onset diabetes, as well as strokes. Up to 65% of these patients can have sustained hypertensive crises, but you can also have hypertensive emergencies that wax and wane throughout the patient's disease process. What medications do we use to prepare these patients for surgery? So the biggest goal with medical therapy is to control hypertensive crises as well as maintaining intravascular volume. So the way you do this is by first blocking alpha blockers or using alpha blockers. That's going to be phenoxybenzamine, perazosin, doxazosin, and terazosin. These are all going to block the effects of the uh, catecholamines that work on alpha receptors, so you're not going to get the vasoconstriction, which causes hypertension. But if you use these uh, medications, there's a chance that your patient may get what we call a reflex tachycardia. And when this patient gets this, sometimes you want to add on beta blockers to block the beta receptors and reduce the tachycardia that's occurring. However, what you want to avoid is just starting beta blockers without having any alpha blockers on board. This unopposed alpha blockade could then cause uh, hypertensive, hypertensive crises on their own. Recently, we've also seen calcium channel blockers like nicardipine being used for these scenarios as well, and may even be better than the alpha blockers. What is a concern with a laparoscopic approach for the surgery? Laparoscopic surgery has been shown to increase the release of catecholamines from these tumors, and so you usually want to keep your insufflating pressures on the lower side, which will lessen the amount of release of those catecholamines, decreasing the risks of hypertensive crises during the surgery. You can also uh, abort the laparoscopic approach if your patient's having consistent, unreliable hemodynamics. How would you approach uh, postoperative hypotension in these patients? The first thing you want to make sure you do with these patients is make sure that they're intravascularly resuscitated appropriately. You want to give them IV fluids and also rule out any sources of hemorrhage that would require surgical expiration or transfusions. Next, you're going to want to make sure that these patients are either on norepinephrine, uh, but you might have patients who are resistant to catecholamines like norepinephrine or epinephrine, so you're going to want to use vasopressin as well. What are a couple other post-operative problems that could arise? Post-operatively, you may notice that your patient is a little bit on the somnolent side. This could be from the abrupt removal of all the catecholamines that were circulating in their body. You can also see a decrease in the narcotic requirement for post-operative pain. Something else that you might notice is that they could get uh, hypoglycemic. This is from a decreasing or increasing levels of insulin circulating throughout the body, and you may see it uh, severely to the point where they get respiratory arrest as well as cardiac arrest. You occasionally may see persistent hypertension, which could be a result of remaining tissue still being in the body even after the removal of what's thought to be the full tumor. But if you're following catecholamine levels, these may take up to three or four days in order to go back to normal levels after the removal.